Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Today, I'd like to talk about the um, learning to take control of your autonomic nervous system. This is a topic we talked. I've talked a lot about recently, but getting a little more um, into practicality on it because the uh, the issue that, that comes up is that how do we let go if we are already triggered into a reactive mode? So I think one thing, I, my observation, and, and you may have a disagreement with this, but I, I think that it's kind of built into the human being to be in a state of vigilance moving toward hypervigilance as sort of a default setting. So, and what is, think of this as like, if you ever carry any kind of muscular tension around with you, say in your neck, your shoulders, back, whatever, then that's a, an indicator that at a pre-conscious level, a, that, stress response, that pre-conscious stress response is, has been activated. And my experience as a, uh, as a energy healer practitioner for, uh, for a long time is that most people are unaware of this and that makes it pre-conscious. We're not, we don't know that we know. So it, um, so we're carrying around this tension and, you know, some people, it'll be like in their shoulders. They're like, you know, their, their shoulders keep creeping up. You know, they're driving a the car like, like this. You know, other people will be in, in their neck. You know, they'll be like, you know, their chin will be jutting out and there'll be like tension in the neck as they're trying to hold that eight pound bowling ball uh, up. So there's a, a lot of that, that, that stress response that, that, that occurs and it's kind of as a, as a default mechanism. So there are two phases. One is like, like what, are, what are the hacks to get out of that, get out of that if I notice I'm in it? And the other is how do I train myself so that that's not my first, my go-to move, my, my, my fundamental response? Like I say, I think it's 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 sort of broadly uh, present in most humans, and that's because as as creatures, as mammals, we have uh, we are we have like millions of years of evolution that have decided that that is like a really cool way to make sure that you pass on your genes to the next generation, and uh, and kind of reaching a point where it's not nearly as, as pro-survival as it once was. So we're kind of moving into a phase now where, where we're having to evolve in present time. Where, and that means that we have to use our minds to actually consciously rewire our nervous system so that the things that work whenever we're alone in the jungle you know, startling at every snap of a twig. Um, we don't necessarily have to have in our comfy bed at night behind locked doors. And so we can chill down. Similarly, if we move into situations, you know, social situations where you walk into a party where you are you're, don't know anybody and you're kind of like, feeling the stranger, you're feeling odd, you're feeling like, uh oh, you know, I've got to, I got to be very aware of what's going on there. So you, uh, that hypervigilance kicks in and may manifest as a stress response. So how do we get out of that? So let's just start with that. So the, the, the key to it is, from what I've been able to determine, is that if we get stuck in our mind, 
that is where our, the reality is heavily shaped by our thoughts, then we are um, disconnected from the body to a large extent. And it's still there and it's still sending signals which are pre-conscious. So we're, uh, we're at effect of these, you know, this, this, these muscular tensions and, and the heightened uh, heart rate and, uh, you know, the adrenaline, whatever. So the, um, just by tuning into the body mind through the sense of feeling and all the senses will work, but feeling is the, is the most broadly accessible. And by consciously feeling and consciously doing, we start to take control over that which is, had been controlling us. And so this is sort of goes into the second part, which is how do we change the, the program? But the initial thing is to just be able to, to, to calm yourself down so that you can, um, you can see things for what they are. And something I've told my students for, for many years is the first thing you always do is get coherent. And you know this works in when I'm playing push hands or sparring or whatever. If I'm not coherent, then I'm going to be in a reactive responsive mode. But if I get coherent, then I can shift into a whole different way of being and a whole different state of awareness. So, as, as I've shared with many of you over the years, you know, the idea of pointing and reaching with your index finger is a, is a great way to do that. And, but after a while, you do that and it becomes just another mental thing that you do. And you actually forget to actually feel what that, that feels like to feel your fingers. So we want to amplify the coherence. And so if you can um, access your coherence, but then amplify it, let's say I point my index fingers and I reach with my elbows, then there's just that conscious movement, that conscious feeling creates a shift in my nervous system. I ac access parts of my brain that, that were pushed to the side and may have, and for many people it had never really been explored these new parts of the brain. So by doing that, oh, I, I'm shifting. I shift my awareness and I, and what happens then is there is a quality of emptying. So you're full of this stress response and you say, okay, I, I'd like to get rid of that. So, you know, one simple thing we've done recently, it just, you know, if you can feel, you know, feel your, feel your wrist and move it. And by doing that, do it right now. Just, it just, just move your wrist and, and feel the resistance against your hand. And just the impulses, the sensations that come from that awaken a different part of your brain and it kind of pulls some of your attention out of the thought patterns which are creating that the uh, noise in your in your mind and by just by doing that oh you've emptied and it's a state that i you know i'm, I'm calling super conscious because it is beyond mere intellectual activity it's beyond rational thought it includes rational thought but doesn't get doesn't stop there it allows us to know without thinking it allows us to move into that super conscious state where we are able to get into a body mind spirit integration so the you know simplest thing to do is is just to give yourself a squeeze you know give yourself a hug you know, if you're in a position like, okay, I need to, I need to calm my stuff down. Okay. You know, just 
Just put one hand over your arm, one hand over your, the side of your body. Take a deep breath. Just try that right now. Just And notice that it immediately calms you down. You know, if you want to be more discreet about it, you know, you can just, you can just feel your, feel your hand, you know, you can hold your hands, anything where you can get your attention into the body, you embrace embodiment, but as a, as a strategy, as a, a hack for getting out of your head and being able to by doing that, you are withdrawing the fuel that triggers that, that fight, fight, freeze response. You, when you move into that emptiness, there's, there's a clarity. There's that gap between thoughts. And this goes into the second part, which is how do we how do we reestablish our, um, well, how do we learn how to do this, change our nervous system? And that's where you actually do this as a, a thousand times a day kind of a thing, where you just, you know, you are embracing embodiment as just a fun thing to do, where every time you, you know, just like say right there, just I, reached with my crown, the crown of my head and opened up my jade pillow gate. Do that a hundred times, you know, a day, you know, just boom, like that. Every time you do, you give a, give a, a shot of Jing Shen, that spirit of vitality shoots through you. But it also, it's not just energizes the system, but it, it calms down the, the thinking process. So, um, I'd like to ask if uh, any of this resonates with people. If that, uh, if it's, it's, if I'm on the on the right, right track here. How are we doing, kids? Yes, yes. Sharon. Sure. Yeah. Um, no, what you're saying really resonates with me, and I've found that when I need to have the techniques, I felt the need to be discreet. So one of my lifelong habits is I just do it with my thumb, like this. Right. And people barely notice that, you know. Um, Beautiful. But that's. You can also take your fingers and 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 take your index finger and tap your uh, and and touch your thumb, and and just do just do that. And you know what we're doing here is we're activating that index finger, creating that coherent state, and we're connecting it up with the thumb, and we're feeling the index finger with the thumb. And then we're feeling the thumb with the index finger. And just that simple action oof, dispels the thought forms. Richard. What's that? How was There seems to be something, uh, there seems to be something to an awareness of the opposites. Um, when you, like what you said, you touch your finger with your thumb and your thumb with your finger. I, uh, and there seems to be something important to that. Uh, it's, it's sort of like that, that move that opens, that opens up coherence. Right. And the touching, when I, when I do this, I, uh, try to become aware of the feeling of my the feeling that my thumb is getting from my finger and also the feeling that my finger is getting from my thumb and the combination of the two things seems to be, work very quickly for me um, so I don't know if there's something neurological or uh, well, about it, that it has to be your 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 different neurons are feeding your thumb and your index finger Right. You can isolate them. You are creating a distinction there. You're creating neural connections, which tended to be at a pre-conscious level before. Mm -hmm. If you can, it, if you can dance back and forth between them, and also feel them together, 
then you can you can cover you know the 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 plus the minus and the neutral right if you if you do both it stops the train from heading in one direction right so these are these are all little little th little hacks and i think everybody can can start exploring for yourselves what what works for you and you know like sharon was saying yeah, how discreet do you want to be in in, a, in situations you know you can be so discreet that you can just feel the floor with your feet right you know and just being aware that most people are not really aware of stuff happening below their belts unless there's pain involved and uh if you can actually feel the feel your feet feel the feet feeling the floor it's like whoa you know there's you are accessing earth chi when you do that you're but you're also creating neural connections to parts of your body which really don't get a lot of love so uh by doing that you you know you you awaken jonathan I remember bringing this woman, uh, Mary Burmeister, to the Open Center years ago. She has this thing, Jin Shin Jiu Jitsu, where and she talked about holding each finger will give will is a different feeling and will create a whole different pattern in you. And the, and I also very much remember the difference between she showed us between making a fist, which in your one kind of mode, and holding the thumb, like instead of the thumb out, the thumb in. And that makes a real difference. That, that's it's funny. I hadn't thought about it in years, but you've been exploring this on your exact same subtle level of just touch a finger and look what happens. Like wow, the whole world opens right. up. Beautiful, beautiful. Nick. Well, yeah. So I was going to suggest for me, I can feel it. Speaking of feeling, I can get that feeling in my brain of the difference, and we sometimes do this with our students, is, is the difference between reaching for your finger with your thumb and moving from one to the other and bringing your finger up to touch the thumb. If you pay attention to what happens up here, you can really feel the difference. It's a lot absolutely, of absolutely, absolutely. So you, as you develop this awareness, you can do exactly what Nick's talking about there. You can feel the activity in your brain. You can trace what part of your brain is doing the work by the feeling of it, because the you're actually going to get different amounts of electrical activity, different amounts of blood flow as you shift your awareness. And so you can actually feel which part of your brain is lighting up at any uh, at any time. Maria, do you have a question? You have I something? have an observation. <laughs> you have an observation. Like, Go on. <laughs> like what we're doing with all of these different things is taking is um, uh, uh, stopping the automatic and starting the conscious. Like so, we put in the. Uh, I guess when when you say empty, it's really let go of the automatic response, so that you can then make a conscious decided response, right? So we're actually switching from um, habitual to conscious. Right. Right? Right. Okay. I agree. Yeah. So you're going from pre-conscious to conscious. So it's something that you're, and every time we do that, we're changing things. The other thing we can do, and we've explored this in other classes, is left, right. Because the left side of the brain, the left hemisphere of the brain controls movement in the right hand. The right side of the brain controls movement in the left hand. If you can deliberately, consciously, volitionally move your fingers and feel your fingers, you're activating your left side of your brain. When you do, you shift back and forth, then you can create, first of all, separation and then integration hemispheric synchronization can occur by by doing that and this is another way of emptying out so all these things all these little hacks are ways of reprogramming our nervous system so that we're taking control of something 
which you know has been assumed to be beyond our control. Lynn. One thing that I like to do in, in the subtleness is simply release that lower back, um, release the main men. Mm -hmm. um, because that's also something that you often will tense, like, you know, if you're in a threatened or whatever position, but also it not only does let go of like actual tension, but it also opens up the, the flow and gets, gets the lower body involved which we're also often forgetting, you know, like you were saying before. Why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about the Ming men? Because I, th I think there's some people who don't, uh, don't have uh, an understanding of where it is and what it is, and it's just a funny word. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so why, don't you, why don't you tell us a little bit about it? Oh, nobody told me. I retired today. I don't have to work. <laughs> <laughs> You're beginning your second career. <laughs> um, the big man is the life gate, which is at the base of the spine here, opposite right opposite the, the belly button, the non-dantian rather. Um, and it's um, it's a really lively place um, where you can bring the uh, heaven and, and earth energy together. I think. Um, not quite sure what uh, else to yeah. say. <laughs> Help? <laughs> Anybody else? Yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's one of the three gates in the in the governing channel. Nick says it's one of the three gates in the governing channel, right? So you're opening up that flow, right? Um, and uh, allowing that chi force to really go throughout the body, which I think is gonna, if done consciously, is gonna be a big uh, boost to um, reforming without tension and stress. Great. So how do you open this Ming Men point, Lynn? Oh, I, um, <laughs> I just go there, right, with my mind. Uh, and I think, and I, and I um, just release my qua a little bit and, uh, and let the, I have allow the feeling of drop to happen in the in the lower back so that you're um, not tilting the pelvis um, but releasing the pelvic floor I think you would say um, and it feels uh, wonderfully refreshing great <laughs> thank you <laughs> sorry to make you work on, yeah, really. on your first day of freedom. <laughs> uh, Stan, you're on mute, Stan. Uh, just a question on the Ming men. Uh, like the uh, uh, lower Dantian, uh, you know about where it is. It's, they've been talking enough. But where is the Ming men? Is it in for a little bit, or it's on the surface, or where? That's a good question. Uh, I've always assumed it was, you know, right there at the uh, opening into onto the surface, but also extending inward um, on the uh, on the the, the uh, mm. uh, governing channel, and uh, so, uh, but. You know, if you just put your hand on, you know, one hand on the Dantian and just take it and put your other hand behind you opposite that, then you're going to feel that, uh, that, that that's, that's the point we're talking about there. Okay. And so you can actually breathe into, you know, particularly if you're like leaning back against it and you can actually just breathe into that and feel your body expanding into your hand as you do that, then you're, yeah. you're feeling into that. So, oh, good. But thank you. The quality there, it's also, oh, we got. Uh, uh, is that do four? <laughs> do four. Do four, okay. Valor, you had something? Um, just a question. If you um, 
drop the Wei Lu, aren't you opening the Ming Men? Probably. Yes. Uh, that helps. I mean, usually, yeah. yes. But bringing awareness to that to that point is, is where you yes. where you you feel if you actually feel that point, it's it's more of an active rather than a passive release. Mm -hmm. You are consciously, you know, saying, "Oh," because bringing attention to anything is brings the chi there. So your ability to bring that attention there allows it to. Uh, to activate as, as, a, as a unique uh, point. Richard. I was just gonna say it's a particularly good thing to pursue because it's right in the middle of where most of us hold that uh, tension in our lower back. Um, so yeah, think, thinking was... about that, it's right in the middle of where your back hurts most of the time. <laughs> yeah, and you can, you know, you can kind of find it or become more aware of it by doing that classic lie on the ground and put your knees up and your feet flat and then, you know, lower the back to, uh, to touch the ground too, that if you're not sure where you're, you're looking for it, it's in that area. Cool. Okay, we're going to move <laughs> on you. now. Um, uh, hopefully that's some food for thought. I, I, you know, we gave you a few ideas for, you know, little hacks you can do, but all falls under the heading of conscious feeling, conscious movement. Mm -hmm. that it's your ability to to do the to do which is the yang aspect your ability to feel which is the yin aspect and if you're able to make both happen you know either alternately or together but you're if you're able to do that then you're able to change your internal state and allows that the thought forms to disappear because they if if we're just feeding our thought forms then that's what we're going to get if we're embracing embodiment then we get a chance to to uh, open up to other possibilities um let's uh move on to something um more more in the do category and uh Last week, we started to talk about the idea of press and press as a movement, which is actually just an expression of a one of the eight Bamen, the energy gates of Taiji Tran, which is the G energy. And uh, classically, we, we do a, a press by bringing both arms together either through the hands or the through the wrists. I've seen it done where you put both the, the palms of the hands together or one palm on the heel of the hand, the hand on the wrist. Uh, also I've seen it done uh, where you have the you know the backs of the wrist, you know, the back of, of, of one hand against the front of the other. So that creating that uh, that's another way of, of doing a press. And uh, but the G Jin is, is, is special because there's lots of ways of doing this, this form as a press movement. And a lot of them are very mechanical. And the one thing, the one radical departure that I want to emphasize is you're not pushing away from the earth to, to make the, the arms go out. And I'll just show you what I'm talking about here. The uh, way a lot of all people do it is, is there's a, a sense of you're pushing, using your muscles to push away from the earth and arms of God, in which case there is a, a um, um, the arms are both young. And the legs are also young, so then everything is young, and there's nothing really making that yin connection. So the what I would like to emphasize when we're moving away from a mechanical movement into an expression of chin or energy, where we're expressing energy through the body, is that the, the lower body is sinking 
So the legs are sinking down into the earth. We're getting very sung, sung kwa. And by doing that, we're dropping into that, releasing downward, and then allowing the arms to express the energy that as it comes out and, and goes like that. So I want to do it and um, more as just sort of a standing meditation to uh, just to familiarize with that with that process. We initiated the discussion last week, but um, it's a fairly radical idea. So I want I want to really uh, give it give it a chance to breathe a little bit. So um, uh, why don't you stand up and we'll uh, we'll start playing with that. So we're going to begin by stepping out and getting the three pillars in. So what that does is it you know sets us up, makes the energetic connections, opens up to the big chi, and frees up the qua, unkinks the hose. So first of all, you want to feel the balls of your feet. And before I was talking about feeling the floor with your feet as a way of accessing that superconscious state, a way of releasing thought forms. So just notice it right now, just by doing that, you can touch the floor with your toes if you like. And just by doing that, we immediately shift into a superconscious state. This is accessible anytime you choose to do it. It also engages the earth in a conversation. We're opening up to the earth chi, the yin chi of the earth. We're allowing it to enter through the bubbling well points in the, in the, in the foot. By feeling the balls of the foot, we're creating a structure that allows that Yin Chi to enter. Now let's establish the Yang terminal and reach for the crown of the head. Tuck in the chin and open up the Jade pillow gate. It's one of the key points for unkinking the hose, one of the major gates. Relax your lower back, drop your sacrum and feel the Weilu point, which is at the, in the coccyx. And feel that at the same time as you're reaching with the crown of your head. So you're dropping down your legs, your, your qua, everything is sinking, getting more sung as you reach up with the crown. So there's a elongation there. Relaxing the lower back allows that Weilu or that uh, Ming Men point we were talking about before. You can actually just bring your awareness to that. If you want, you can just bring your, your hand back and just feel that, breathe into it. Just bring some awareness to that. And this opens up the gates along the spine, the Du channel or the governing vessel. Feel your index fingers. You can wiggle them a little bit if you like, just to, what we're doing is establishing our coherence there. We're bringing the whole system into, into, into unity, into a state of wholeness. Reach with the elbows, opening up the shoulder joints. Feel the chi in your hands as you're doing this. Reach with the uh, clavicular notch here on your, cl your clavicle, the, that little notch there right at the base of the neck, to the base of the throat. Feel yourself pulling up. And as you do that, it opens your shoulders, opens your chest. And keep going back and feeling 
sinking into your legs, even as you're reaching with the crown. So you're going in two different directions. And just by doing that, you are creating a poles in opposition, which generates chi flow. And spiral down to the left, just feel yourself releasing into the quad, then spiral down to the right. We're just letting go and sinking into the quad. Feeling the load, the torso is loading up. The quad is, is the point where the legs meet the torso. The torso is a unit, the legs are, so this is the, 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 the junction point there, which allows us to move and keeping the torso as one's one unit. Relax, bow forward slightly. So you're releasing the quads, you bow forward. You wanna feel the weight over the balls of your feet. Doesn't have to go very far. You just wanna just relax and, and release any muscular tension that's happening there in, in the hip joints. And as you straighten up, you're still, you're straightening up without pushing away from the earth. You're still sinking down and in your hands up, you're scooping up energy as you're coming up here. Give your hands a little rotation there, your arms a little rotation just to feel what that does. Notice that it generates chi, just that, that simple conscious movement there. It also clears the mind. Feel your elbows, reach with those. And just notice that conscious movement and conscious feeling has that same effect. Creates energy and it creates that state of super consciousness. You move into a clear minded state. Rotate the forearms so the palms go down, but do it. Turn and then back, turn, just notice just that process of turning is creating a powerful feeling in your arms. This is, this is how we activate our gin through conscious feeling, conscious movement. Yeah. Press down and feel the resistance of the space as you move through that. And make an important distinction here is that you are not resisting. You're feeling the resistance of the space. Your arms are very relaxed. But there you can think of pushing against the of the air, the density of the air, if you like. Swimming through, through the air. What this does is it activates the chin, getting that feeling. Let's do that again. Rotate, feel that. This, and this going back to our, our hacks about how to empty out, you know. If you just do this, just rotate your forearms Feel into your hands, you'll notice that you're, you're doing exactly that. You're emptying out and you're taking control over your nervous system. And coming up, feel, feel the weight of the space of the air on your arms. Reach with the elbows, rotate, just back and forth, just feel that little rotation there. Good. Palms down. 
feel yourself pressing down on the on the space as though you were pressing down on a beach ball in a swimming pool a float just kind of pushing down and so you're pushing but you're not moving there's no muscular intention no muscular tension involved but you're activating the nervous system so that it's ready to move it's like you're pulling back the bowstring and you're ready to to release the arrow anytime you want. And press down. You're pushing down on that beach ball. Feel the chi in your arms, in your hands, in your shoulders, in your feet. Feel the heat in your feet. Okay, pivot on your left heel, step out. And then you're gonna step forward with your right foot. So now you have, your weight is about 70% in your right leg. And bring your hands up. And bring the palm of your left hand against the heel of your right hand and reach forward. Reach with your elbows, open your shoulder joints and sink into your right leg. Reaching with the crown of your head as you do that. As you're sinking down, you're activating the yin energy coming up through your feet, filling your whole body. And you're reaching with the crown of your head and that activates the yang chi from the heavens. Feel the relaxing your muscles so that you're allowing the arms to express the energy with a minimum of tension. Separate the hands and press down. Allow yourself to, to feel the neutrality of this posture. Allow your weight to settle into your rear leg now. About 70% in your left leg. Now feel the ball of the right foot. Push your right knee forward, set that. Release the right claw and you're bowing forward slightly. You're coming up with the hands. Feel your elbows. Reach. Reach with your elbows. Reach with your wrists. Reach with the crown. Sink. So it's counterintuitive. How can this possibly be powerful if I'm not pushing away from the earth? It's kind of like filling up a uh, like a like a tire or something. You're you're blowing it up as you sink down. You're more rooted, more connected, more energetically full. Separate the hands. 
Feel the left ball, set the left knee, sink into your left leg as your hands come down. Step back with your right foot, step forward with your left. We'll go up the other side now. So left ball, set the left knee, release, sink into your left quad. Hands come up. This time the left hand is in front, the right palm on the heel of the left hand. And reach out, reach with your elbows, sink into your legs. Reach with the crown. Relax your muscles. Let the chi do the work. You're expressing your chin through the body. Your chi is taking shape, taking form. Feel any muscular tension and let that go. Separate the hands. For the right ball, set the right knee, sink into the right leg, release the right claw, hands come down, pressing down. Feel the chi in your body. Enhancing our awareness by fine tuning this and creating these quiet movements, we're enhancing the inner awareness the, uh, as we're uh, developing our access to the chin. Feel the left ball, push your left knee forward, set the left knee, release, sink into the left claw, and bring the hands up. Left arm in front, right palm on left, heel of the left hand. Reach with the elbows, reach with the wrists, reach with the crown. Sink into your quad, into your legs. Feel that yin support. Move your hands a little bit and just get that, that feeling that what we we're talking about before, just your ability to make these small movements consciously enables you to, to get more familiarity in your nervous system. We have a tendency to kind of create algorithms to, to replace conscious movement. And so we're, we're busting up the algorithms by making these little these little movements, separating the hands, reach for the elbows, feel your wrists, feel your fingers, right ball, feel the, set the right knee, and you're bowing forward into the right claw as you bring your hands down. Feel the chi in your arms, your hands. This G Jin is very powerful. It's a very young energy. It's um, very expansive. So you need to balance it out with a lot of yin, because the yin is the fuel that feeds the young ex expression. Step back with your left foot. Pivot. Step in. Take a deep breath. Exhale, disappear the chi. 
MPO. Take a seat, please, for a few minutes. Are you raising your hand, Rick? Or just no, you're just adjusting things. Okay. Anybody have any? Uh, Scott? Uh, it just occurred to me while we were doing this that um, it's kind of like um, an airbag in a car, right? It's expanding everywhere at once. And it's got a lot of power to it, it could save your life, right? But it's it's just a bag of air. Kind of thing, <laughs> that's, right? that's a good point, you're right. <laughs> it's just a bag of air. <laughs> And, and that's, a, that's right, it's just a bag of chi, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. Uh, that, that, that's, that's a good analogy. That's a good analogy. Cool. How'd that feel? Stan, you got something? You, you will have to go off mute though, Stan. There you go. Okay. Yeah, I, what I noticed is that uh, I'm way following this uh, uh, exercise, meditation, whatever, uh, it keeps uh, the chi gets stronger and stronger and all that. But I noticed that uh, uh, once I get in position, it's sort of up to a certain level. And when I start dropping down, uh, just about when I hit bottom, it seems to be even more intense. Is that uh, uh, correct? Or is that, is that wrong? No, uh, by more intense, you mean there's, there's more of a sense of fullness? Yes. Yes. No, that, that, that sounds right. Oh, okay. That sounds right. Yeah. Because you're you're really focusing on the feeling at that point, the yin and and less on the do. Mm. You know, so it's uh the it they they work together. They're like ah. a bellows. Oh, very cool. good. Thank you. you. Bet. Anybody else? Okay, so uh, uh, yeah, so that's the so that's that's the way to 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 cultivate Jijin, at least the way that that I have found it as an as an energy as a as a expression of Jin. So uh, that the hard part is learning to be able to to sink rather than push away from the earth. And particularly whenever you're applying this, say in a push hands context, you know, where you're, where there's the primitive response is to tighten up and, and to hands up the legs and push away. And to be able to, it's counterintuitive to actually release and, and go down. But the, uh, mm -hmm. this is where we shift from a mechanical expression into one which is predominantly energetic. And uh, that's where the fun begins. Mm. Yes. Okay. Uh, Valerie. So what I noticed was, um, you know, I was really working on relaxing the arms and not allowing any muscular tension to be there and, you know, reaching with my elbows to open the shoulders, making sure there was no tension there. And I was really very happily surprised at the amount of energy I felt just in my hands. It was like, well, they weren't going anywhere, you know, reaching up, reaching down into the ground and it just, you know, finding that focal point um, was delightful. Wonderful, <laughs> bravo. Yes. And uh, so part of the actual practice of this, where we actually do this kind of stuff, 
is um, is to acclimate to that sense of fullness. So you're kind of you're you keep expanding the container, so you're able to hold more and more chi. Mm. You're able to circulate more and more chi, which then you becomes something that you can use, uh, you can express uh, through your body, which is gobs of fun. Mm. Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Thank you all. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Maria.